are so grateful to partner uh, with V103 and with the right law group uh, to provide 1,000 turkeys to families in this community. They've been here since 2 a.m. and they're still pulling up. Oh, happy Thanksgiving, man. I just want to thank you for the love and the support, man, and the community, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. I was looking to get all these cars that have been on the parking lot since 2 a.m., and I was reminded of when it is that Jesus was talking and teaching one day, and at the end of the service, the disciples said, send them away. It's 5,000, and we don't have anything to feed them with. And Jesus said, what do you have? He said, all we got is two fish and five loaves of bread. But the miracle is not that they were all fed, but they had 12 baskets left over. I don't know where you are listening today, but I'm getting ready to tell you what God is gonna do is from not enough to more than enough. And that's the faithfulness of our God, is that God will bring you to surplus. You are not supposed to just be surviving, you're supposed to be thriving. God doesn't want you to just live at the minimum, but he said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm speaking to you in your car, in your cubicle, in your home, in your dormitory, in your barrack. Get ready. This is your last season with not enough. God is looking at you and things are getting ready to turn to more than enough. Oh God, this, that is, I'm grateful for everything. I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for God. I'm grateful for his blessings, my family. I'm grateful for second, third chances. There's not one thing you can say you're grateful for. You know, God is just good. I'm grateful that, you know, I told my daughter, I said, even if we don't get a turkey today, I said, I'm grateful that God has blessed every other family to get a turkey. It's just a blessing to see everyone else get a blessing. So when you're blessed, it's not, a, it's not just about yourself. When other people are blessed, that's just God, because we're blessed regardless, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm blessed regardless. I'm just grateful that everyone else was able to get here because my mom called me. I had no idea this was going on. You know, she called me, yes.
somebody to help us celebrate. Listen, take us off the iPad, take us off the cell phone, put us up on the screen. You got the family together. Let's worship Jesus together as we give him a thank you praise tonight. We celebrate you, Jesus. Somebody in the building say thank you. Come on.
is good. Now, come on, open your mouth and praise him there. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what you went through in 2020. I don't know what job you were laid off in 2020. I don't know who died in 2020. But you made it to 2021. Not only did you make it to 2021, he brought you through March. Showed up in July. And you have the nerve to still have breath in your lungs in November. Baby, it may not be what you want, but I came to tell you, God's been God. Glory. Glory. Welcome to new birth. But would you just touch somebody in the room and just tell them God's been good. God's been good. I don't know how I made it, but God's been good. God's been real. Real. Real good. Every devil in hell tried to knock me off my feet. But I came to tell them, God, you've been good. And I'm still here. I'm still here. Tag somebody. Tag somebody right now. Say good. 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 Good on Monday. Good on Tuesday. Good on Wednesday. Chitlin's good. Prime rib good. Turkey good. Yams good. Well, if you gon' do it, I'ma give you 30 seconds right now. now God's been good don't do it Jesus you've been so good so good come on just one time of it just come to tell you thank you for no goodness of our own we're here and for this we say thank you you've held back waters you've changed the doctor report you've provided abundance where there was lack 
you regulated my mind where I was about to go insane. And I tell you, thank you for being good. And Lord, we come today to tell you thank you not for what you've done. Not just for what you're doing. But God, we come to tell you thank you for what you're getting ready to do. And for this praise we give you right now. It's for what's getting ready to show up in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, come on, clap your hands from wherever you are. Oh, welcome to Thanksgiving service here at New Birth. Pastor Kylie Slimmons. And I'm privileged to share this moment with you today. Can't you testify that God has been good to you? Listen, right now, Scriptures talk about how 10 lepers were talking to God. Nine of them received the miracle from God, leave his presence, and never turn around. But the Bible records there was one who turned around in the moment of a miracle while he was on his way being clean. He said, God, I can see the miracle working power even now. I've not made it to 2022 but I'm on my way. And while he saw his healing power begin to flow in his body, he then turned and told God, thank you. I don't know about you, but I can testify. God, I'm not in January, but thank you for where I'm going. Friends, family today, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to get a seed offering of Thanksgiving. I don't want to hold it any longer. God, I start this moment out of praise and I start this moment out petitioning not only my gratitude, but my seed. Saying, God, that what I invest into your house is going to reap a harvest greater in my house. Family, I want you to do this by a sign of faith. I want you to get a $70 seed in your hand even now. As I am believing that God, where I am going is better than any place I've ever been. If you believe it even right now, the prompts are beneath me. It is a secure site. You can do it swiftly. I believe that straightway, as you go, as the Bible says they went, healing virtue is coming to you. Trust God. You don't have to trust me. And watch him show up in your life. All those givers, all those who are part of the offering moment, and all those who believe that where you're going is better than where you've ever been, would you just shout out, thank you. Thank you. Family and friends, we are so honored to have you with us. On behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, there is no place that we would want you to be but to be in worship with us today. I know you smelled the food in the kitchen. I know you, <laughs> I know you sense what's cooking in the kitchen. But aren't you excited about what God is cooking in your life? Something is stewing in your life. Something is brewing in your life. And something is on special order for your life. Listen, family and friends, after we celebrate this great day, I know you're going to be full. But I'm encouraging you even now, watch this, that on Black Friday, everybody say Black Friday. I want you to join Pastor and Black Wall Street, all of the New Birth family, from November 26th through November 28th. It starts at 11 a.m. through 8 p.m. It is going to be a day to support black business. Amen. The dollar doesn't circulate long enough, and wide enough in the black community. And we want to make sure that our minority business owners, our small business owners get the support that they need. And we are happy and honored. And we celebrate that our pastor is leading the effort. Come on, New Birth. Clap your hands. Give God praise. Listen, if you thought service was good so far, if you have been blessed so far, I want you to buckle up. Because the next man of God that is getting ready to come is going to show you that what just happened is only an appetizer. I am excited about the man of God that is getting ready to deliver the word. Pastor Stokes, Pastor, and I, a few others 
Pastor Ross, Pastor Turner, we would sneak in 2020 to his service all the way in Stockbridge, Georgia. It's where we saw cars pile up. At a mighty move of God, church called Grace Baptist Church. I want you to know that this man of God is the senior pastor and founder. He is a teacher, but my God, is he a preacher. I want to let you know that he is a great man of God and a YouTube wonder. I want you to know that not only will he do it, but he's going to do it. Why don't you share even now because God is getting ready to speak to you in a special way through him. We are getting ready to receive from the man of God none other than Pastor Clinton McFarland. New birth? Get ready because we're getting ready to go to another planet. After that, you would hear of our praise team. You would hear that of none other than Pastor Clinton McFarland. Posture yourself to receive this word of God. Today, we're not only going to eat turkey, but we're going to eat from the word. And if you're hungry, you're going to get filled. New birth, aren't we grateful? Come on, praise team. Elder Tiffany Bowen. Can you just type it in the comment section now? I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. Come on, speak it into the atmosphere. Only the ones that are grateful, let's speak it out loud. I'm grateful. Yes, I am, Lord. We bless your name. He's an awesome God, miraculous in all of his ways. So we lift our hands and we worship him. Thank you, Lord. Let's do it together, family. Come on. I'm grateful. For all of the things you've done, you've done for me. That's it. Come on, tell them you've been faithful. I'm merciful for my sins. You forgave me. Can you lift your hands? 
Bless the Lord, everybody. God bless you. How many grateful people in the building? Are you really grateful? Are you really thankful? All of us have a reason. We have a right to give God praise. How about this praise team blessing us in a major way? I tell you the truth, I'm just blessed to be here and thank God for all of you. I want to honor the eminent and the illustrious and the marvelous and the magnanimous and the splendiferous pastor of the New Birth Church, my friend and brother. Come on, everybody, bless the Lord. Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryan. Amen. Thank you for this awesome opportunity to share with you on this Thanksgiving Day. And we have so much to be thankful for. And I'm just blessed. In spite of all of the things that I've been through, I still got joy. Anybody in the church feels like I feel? Still got joy. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank God for those of you who are in the cyber sanctuary, in your homes, wherever you are. We thank God for your presence. We thank God for your presence. I ask that you would uh, play a part in evangelism right now by sharing this, whatever platform you're on, go on and share it so that others will get what we're getting because we are blessed and this is the way to celebrate thanksgiving worshiping god and giving god praise giving god glory and honor well good to be a new birth and then glad to have some of the precious people of the grace baptist church with us today amen bless you my executive pastor is here, several other ministers are here, and certainly I am delighted to have, I believe, the most beautiful lady in the world, and that's my wife, Tamara. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm partial, I'm partial, and I'm prejudiced, I suspect, when it comes to that. But thank you so much for being with us. Lest I usurp too much of your time on today, I know it's a busy day, a great day, and I do not want to usurp too much of your time. If you have your Bibles, I would that you would turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 17. We've heard it once already by my brother, uh, but uh, that's where I'm headed to. And as you're sharing with me, I'm just an old school kind of Baptist preacher. <laughs> and I have to sing my prayer hymn that sort of settles my spirit before I preach. Father, if you know it, help me. stretch my to Lord to thee come on all over the world no Feel your presence. Thyself from me. Oh, 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 o
my hand to thee. No other help I know. I've tried everybody else. Yee! Glory be to God. I've tried everything else. And I have nowhere else I can go. Oh, glory to God. Let me try to preach this word tonight. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verse number 11. And it came to pass... As he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God, fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. I want you to cue in on verse number 17. It is here where we will extract our subject. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God except this stranger. That's what I want to talk about on today. Where are the nine? That's what I want to talk about for the next few minutes. Where? Are the nine. It is always important that we show our gratitude whenever something has been done on our behalf. What I've discovered, uh, what I have ascertained about life is that people do not have to be nice. And when they are nice, they do not have to be nice to you. But when they are nice to you, then the least that you should do is to turn back and tell them thank you. I've dealt with some frustrating people in my lifetime, but one of the most frustrating individuals that I've ever had to deal with is an ungrateful individual. Have you ever dealt with anybody like that? Have you ever dealt with a person who seems to display a sense of entitlement? They act as if what you did for them was what you ought to have done. I don't like people like that because whenever you cannot show me gratitude for what I did for you in the past, you give me very little incentive to do anything else in the future. I don't like dealing with ungrateful people. I do not like dealing with people who have a sense of entitlement. I know some folk like that. If you give them a ride, they are upset because they wanted to drive. If you pay their electric bill, they are mad because you should have paid the water bill. 
just a sense of entitlement. I don't like dealing with that. And I'm sure I'm not the only one in this sanctuary or the cyber sanctuary that has a problem with people who display a sense of entitlement and thus they are ungrateful. It bothers me. But ladies and gentlemen, when I think about how it bothers me, I have to pause and wonder how often do we do the Lord the same way? I mean, when is the last time you opened your mouth and really gave God praise? When is the last time you fell on your face and gave God the glory? I'm not talking about the stuff that you are expecting him to do. I'm talking about the stuff that he's already done in your life realizing that what he did, he did not have to do it. God did not have to wake you up this morning. God did not have to put food on your table and clothes on your back. God did not have to keep you in your right mind. And you ought to know that you're in your right mind because you got up this morning and didn't put your shoe on your head and your hat on your foot. That's indicative of the fact that you are in your right mind. And if you are there, it was God who kept you there. And that's enough right there to give God some praise. I've had the privilege of perusing this particular pericope. And what I've discovered from my perusal of the text is that in this text, there is an awful case of ingratitude. Jesus healed 10 men. Nine of them did not even have the decency to turn back and give him thanks. That's an awful case of ingratitude. But I'm glad that I kept reading because whereas I saw an awesome case of ingratitude, I saw an awesome case of gratitude. Because the text says, and one of them. Come on, help me preach. Let me hear you say, and one of them. When he saw that he was healed, he turned back, and the text says, with a loud voice, he fell on his face and gave the Lord some praise. If you got time, let's dive into the text. Let's walk it real quickly. Jesus is headed to Jerusalem. And as he's en route to Jerusalem, he passes through the borders of Samaria and Galilee. It is then that he comes in contact. In fact, he's confronted by 10 men who had a dreaded disease called leprosy. It is now in the text where we hear the cry of the lepers. The cry of the lepers because it's in verse number 13 where the text says that they lifted their voices and they shouted, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. Y'all mighty cool about that. And maybe you're cool because you don't understand how dreaded of a disease leprosy was in that day. Come close. Let's talk about it. In times of antiquity, there was no cure for leprosy. Their contemporary physicians could not do anything for them. It was a dreaded disease. Let me tell you about it. Uh, it was one where the skin would become scaly and irritated. You would then break out in boils which would ooze with the most unsightly flow of pus. It is then that your fingers and toes would no longer experience any sensation. It is said that you could stick your hand in the fire and could not even tell that it was hot. 
person who had leprosy was banished from their home, banished from their community, and they were isolated and relegated to a sub-colony for lepers. Now you can see how awful this disease is. So when these guys saw Jesus from afar, they thought within themselves, this is my moment, this is my opportunity to get what I've been trying to get for a long time. And so when they saw Jesus, brothers and sisters, uh, they actually broke tradition. Because you Bible readers, you biblical scholars, you homileticians, you know that it was against the traditions to come in contact with anybody when you had a leprous condition. But these guys broke tradition. They broke, they broke rituals. They broke folkways and mores because when you are desperate, then rules and regulations are thrown out the door. Maybe y'all have never been desperate. Maybe you've never had more month than money. Maybe you've never been sick and the doctor couldn't figure out what was going wrong in your body. Maybe your children have not been acting out of character. Maybe your marriage has not been on the rocks. But I've got some folk in this room today who have been desperate. And whenever you are desperate, you ain't concerned about rules and regulations. You ain't studying traditions and folk ways and mores you'll do whatever you have to do to get the attention of the master the bible said that they lifted their voices and they shouted Jesus master have mercy ought to have one or two witnesses here that know that if you call him and call him right He'll heal. Uh oh. <laughs> He'll come to your rescue. Y'all still mighty cool. Well, maybe you don't understand what mercy is. Can I take a moment and tell you what mercy is? First of all, mercy is different from grace. I'm starting to feel like preaching here. Grace, I've got some scholars here, you know it, is God's unmerited favor. Can I break it down? Grace is when God gives you what you don't deserve. Somebody ought to really have a good Thanksgiving because you got a whole lot of stuff and you know that you didn't deserve. Can I just name a couple of things? Some of you got a job and you were not even qualified for it. And the only reason why you got it, they didn't go too back, too far back in the background check to your weed smoking days. Some of y'all got cars and your credit was jacked up. Some of you got homes and you couldn't come up with a down payment. You ought to give God praise because that was the grace. Lift your little sanctified hand and say, thank God for grace. Come on in your home, lift your hand and say, thank God. <laughs> Thank him for grace. That's grace. Grace is when God gives me what I don't deserve. But mercy is when God does not give me what I do deserve. Some of y'all know that you've been the recipient, you've been the beneficiary of the mercy of God because I'm not the only one in this church that's naughty by nature. I'm not the only one that's bad by birth. Some of us have been everywhere, done everything, thought everything, said everything. And the only reason why we are not consumed, it is the mercy of God. So they opened their mouths and said, Jesus, master have, I hear you, mercy on us. It is here where we have the cry 
of the lepers. But can I keep going? Verse 14, now we hear the command of the Lord. Let the church say the command of the Lord. Because watch verse 14. It says that when he saw them, he said unto them. Hold up. That's going to shout me right there. The fact that he saw me and then spoke to me. Y'all miss it. Let me try this side. The fact that he saw me and then spoke to me. Isn't it all right when he first of all sees you? And then he'll turn around. I ain't got time to preach that. The text says, and when he saw them, he said unto them. Now watch the command of the Lord. He said, verse 14, go show yourselves to the priest. What a strange statement. He does not say you are healed. He does not say be delivered. He just simply said, go show yourselves to the priests. That's a strange statement. But though it is strange, it is accurate because Jesus knew what he was talking about and the ten men knew what he was talking about. So the text says uh, that they went towards the priests. Now why did Jesus tell them to go show themselves to the priests? Well, the book of Leviticus tells us that the priests served as the health inspectors for it. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. For anybody who had leprosy but said, I'm now cured, the priest would put you through a series of tests for eight days. And if they were satisfied, they would return you to society. If they were not satisfied, they would put you through another eight-day test. So when Jesus said to these 10 lepers, go show yourselves to the priest, they started working to where the priest was. We've heard the cry of the lepers, the command of the Lord. But can I tell you another thing? Same right there in verse 14. Now we see the cleansing of the lepers. Because the text says, and as they went. Come on, I know you can't touch nobody, but just look at them and tell them, as they went. As they went, they were cleansed. Ah, that's about to shout me. Because the text tells us, that the cleansing of the lepers did not occur prior to walking. Come on, Bible readers. But the cleansing of the lepers occurred after they obeyed the command of the Lord. That's somebody's lesson. The cleansing of the lepers did not occur until they obeyed the command of the Lord. So when Jesus told them to go show yourselves to the priest, they started walking towards the priest. And the text says, as they went, they were cleansed. I like this. And that might give explanation to why some of y'all ain't got your breakthrough yet. Because you waiting on evidence before you start moving. Can I try it like this? You waiting when the Lord told you to start walking. You ain't seen nothing yet, but if God said that it's gonna happen, you ought to act like it's already done. If he said you got the job, go on to your closet and pick out your outfit for the first day. If he said you are healed, go on and walk like you're healed and talk like you're healed. If he said I'm going to pay that bill, go on and give him praise. Don't wait until you see evidence, until you start walking. But before you even see anything... Just fist bump somebody and tell them, get to stepping. 
that wasn't the right neighbor, find another one and tell them, get to stepping. I ain't seen nothing yet. Nothing has changed yet. But the Lord told me to get to stepping. And if he told me... As they went, I, I got to hunk some of this off. As they went, the Bible said they were cleansed. But then verse 15 is powerful. I'm just walking the text. Are y'all walking with me? Verse 15, that, now this ought to shout you. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, the Bible says he turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. Woo! Ain't God all right? Let me try it one more time. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back with a loud voice. He wasn't cute, quiet, and calm. He wasn't reticent, reclusive, and reserved. He wasn't stiff necked, stuck up, and supercilious. He was not heady, high minded, and highfalutin with a loud voice. That's for you cute folk. With a loud voice. That's for you folk that said, don't take all that. With a loud voice. That's for you folk that say, well, you know, I don't go out like that. I don't get in no serving like that. I just, I'm just cool, calm, and collect. With a loud. Somebody ought to try just for about. 10 seconds with a loud voice give him glory and one of them woo, when he saw that he was healed he turned back I'm just walking the text and with a loud voice he gave God glory verse 16 said he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. Now watch Luke. Watch Luke. Luke is a stickler for details because Luke particularly tells us, and he was a Samaritan. Y'all better stick a pen right there because I'm going to hoop that part. And he was. And believe me, I'm going to hoop. I'm a hooping, I'm a hollering preacher. He was a Samaritan. Now we're cool with that, but Jesus has a problem. And his problem is given to us in verse 17. Now, you ought to perk up and listen to this because anything that Jesus has a problem with, you ought to have a problem with. Now watch what Jesus said. Consider the interrogative now. Jesus said, were there not ten that was cleansed? But where are the nine? That's where I'm trying to get to. Y'all missed it. Consider the inquiry. Consider the interrogative. Listen at the question and the concern that is raised by the master. Were there not 10? In other words, there were 10 when they were desperate. But nine are absent when they get delivered. There were 10 when they were broken, but nine is absent. When they got blessed. Here it is again, church. Were there not ten that were cleansed, but where are the nine? New birth. That's our assignment today. Y'all got to help me find them nine brothers. Now, I just need to know who's going to help me find them nine brothers because Jesus is looking for them nine brothers. Them nine brothers who wanted to profit from his power but didn't want to pursue his presence. Were there not ten 
that were cleansed, but why? Y'all gonna help me find the nine brothers. Now, I know where the one brother is. The Bible already told us that that one turned back to give God glory. Now, I know where the one is because he's at the feet of Jesus. Can I tell you what happened when Jesus pronounced uh, that they should go to show themselves to the priests? All ten of them started walking. Can y'all see them? To the priest. One of them, as he's walking, looked at his hands. And his hands, I got some old school folk in here. One of them looked at his feet. Help me preach. And his feet did too. He had a new walk. He had a new talk. He said, wait a minute. That man been too good to me. I can't keep going. I got to turn around. And I got to give him thanks. Now, I like the text because the Bible says, ah, I got to hunk some of this off. It's too much. The Bible says, that when he gave him thanks, he did it with a loud voice. I already told you that, right? Verse 13, the 10, when they saw Jesus, the Bible says that they lifted their voices. Verse 15, the one, when he gave him praise, he gave him praise with a loud voice. Let me try it one more time. Verse 13, when they were petitioning him, they petitioned him by lifting their voices. Verse 15, the one guy gave him glory with a loud voice. Do you know what that tells me? You ought to praise him with the same intensity that you had when you were petitioning. Some of y'all loud when you're begging, but you're quiet when you get blessed. You're loud when you petition him, but you're quiet when it's time to praise him. If you were loud when you were asking him for something, then you ought to be loud when it's time to give him thanks. I'm done couple of things and I'm hitting the runway in a minute. Ah, that's where the one is. The one said I gotta turn back. Is that one in the house tonight? I believe I see that one. Oh, over here. I, oh, you over here. Oh. That don't mind giving him glory. Is that one in the house? All right, all right. But the question is still on the table. New birth? The assignment has not been completed. Are y'all helping me find them nine brothers? I, we know where the one. But where are the nine? All right, let's see if we can find them. The last time we saw them, they were headed to the priest. Am I right about that? Okay, I think we're about to find them. The priest resides in the temple. The temple represents religion. Y'all missed it. The last time we saw the nine brothers, they were headed to the priest. You remember Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. The priest resides in the temple. The temple represents religion. The nine boys, when they got delivered, they were more concerned about returning to religion. 
That one boy said, I ain't studying religion. Religion couldn't heal me when I was sick. Religion couldn't pay my bills when I was broke. Religion couldn't help me when I was down. Uh, I ain't concerned about religion. Uh, I want relationship. Because religion says, you know, you got to have church on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock every Sunday morning. Uh, and religion says that the preacher can't preach unless he has on a robe. Uh, and religion says you got to have two songs and at least two prayers. Uh, and religion says you got to know all of the responsive reading. Uh, and you got to recite the church covenant. Uh, to hell with religion. I'm looking for some folk who are ready for a relationship. And you'll always know who wants a relationship because you'll always find them at the feet of Jesus. <laughs> Lift your little sanctified hand and say, I want relationship. Tell your neighbor, I ain't studying religion. Religion can't do nothing for me because folk have religion. Sometimes we'll lay it down, but when you got relationship, I'm done. The nine are headed back to the same old stuff that couldn't deliver them. But the one said, I got to get to relationship. And watch Luke said, and he was a Samaritan. All right, so Luke is a stickler for details. Dr. Brown, I'm sorry to be so long, but I got to, let me just tell this one little point, then I'm going to hit the runway. Luke gave me the identity of the one. He called him a Samaritan. So now, Luke, you got me curious. If you're going to tell me who the one is, why didn't you tell me who the nine are? You told me one is a Samaritan. But now I need to know the identity of the nine. So you're going to make me work, Luke, to figure out the identity of the nine. I think I got them, though. Jesus is passing between the borders of Samaria and Galilee. Now, if you were a Galilean and got leprosy, they'd move you out of the region. If you were Samaritan and they, you got leprosy, they would move you out of the region. So if the one was a Samaritan, then the nine must have been Galilean. Hold up. Wait a minute. Why is that important? Because Jesus was a Galilean. Which mean that the nine were already familiar with Jesus. And Jesus probably was familiar with them. Oh, somebody feeling me right along through here. The Samaritan, Jesus didn't know that boy. Y'all remember? Y'all remember the text said, Jesus said, only one of them turned back to give me glory. He says, and he was a stranger. I don't even know that Negro. And he gave me more praise than them Negroes that I grew up with. He gave me more glory than the one. Give me E flat. I got to get out of here. He gave me glory. And the ones that I know, and they knew me, would not even give me praise. You know, folk are like that sometimes. Sometimes the ones that you grew up with. Sometimes the ones that you've helped the most. Those are the ones who will be silent when it's time to give God praise.
praise. Bandera. Luke said that that boy who turned around was a Samaritan. Now you Bibles readers, you know that the Samaritans were outcast because the Samaritans were left in Jerusalem uh, during the Babylonian exile uh, and they mixed and mingled uh, with other nations uh, so they were not pure Jews uh, they were frowned upon uh, they were despised uh, and so this Samaritan uh, he obviously felt unworthy of the beneficence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, that's why some of us give him praise, because we don't feel worthy of the blessings of God. You see, it's the worthy people that come to church and sit there and look all crazy. It's the bougie folk uh, that been in church all of their days. Uh, they never had no liquor. Uh, they never been to the club. Uh, they never cuss nobody out. Uh, and they feel like they've been good uh, all of their days. Uh, but some of y'all uh, are just like I am. Uh, you done drunk uh, more than you should have. Uh, you done backed it up uh, and dropped it like it was hot uh, to the window, uh, to the wall, uh, the roof. Uh, Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Uh, we done did everything uh, that we're big enough to do, uh, but yet God kept us. Uh, we done been everywhere. Uh, and been in some places uh, that we should not have gone uh, but yet God kept us uh, let me see uh, my kept people uh, is there any man body here uh, that can say the Lord uh, took care of me uh, the Lord uh, watched over me uh, the Lord fall. That's why I'm a praise him. That's why I give him glory. That's why I thank him. Do I have a witness? Anybody here that can open your mouth and say thank you Jesus. Do like that one did. Turn around and tell the Lord thank you. You didn't have to do but I'm glad you did. You didn't have to wake me this morning. You didn't have to put food on my table. You didn't have to put clothes on my back. And that's why I'll praise him. I don't feel worthy of all of your blessings. I've not been good. I've been to some places. And I should not have gone. I've said some things that I should not have said. But the Lord, ooh, ooh, and the Lord took care of me. Ain't God all right? Now on this Thanksgiving day, you ought to take a moment and give God glory. On this Thanksgiving day, you ought to lift your hands. You ought to open your mouth. If you've not done it earlier this year, it's not too late to give God thanks. Come on in the sanctuary. Come on in the cyber sanctuary. Lift your hand and say, it could have been me. Outdoors. No food uh, and no clothes. Uh, I'm left alone uh, without a friend. Uh, 
just another number with a tragic end, but he wouldn't see fit. To let none of these things be uh, every day, uh, every, 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 uh, been good to you. I said, has he been good? Has he made a way for you? Has he opened doors for you? Has he tried your eyes? Has he paid your bills? I got to get out of here, but I can't leave until I ask you my question. I got one question. New birth. I got to ask you Y'all don't mind. Can I ask you my question? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Why won't he do it? If you know he will, throw your head back, stick your chest out, and shout a Shout a You got it.
God. Lord, everything he poured out into us on Thanksgiving, every sacrifice that he's made on Thanksgiving, we pray that you pour it back, not just 20, not just 40, not 60 or 80, but give it back to him 100 fold. We rebuke sickness off of his life. We rebuke poverty off of his life. We rebuke debt from his life. We counted joy for the life of Clinton Big Father. And we believe that it's already done. And every saint of God shouted, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now I gotta be honest with you. Your dressing, your ham, your turkey, you can't sit at that table and not be thankful. And the challenge here is, I would hate for you to be familiar with the master but still be foreign to him. What you can't do is know of him and not be connected to him. So what better day than Thanksgiving to find the nine, and some of them are in your house. And right now, we're going to locate the nine in the virtual sanctuary because we realize that today will mark your new beginning. He's shifted your life. He's healed you. He's made a way for you. If you're looking for a church home, if you're looking for a change, you're not growing where you're going. You're looking for Christ. You're looking for a connection or a community. It's Thanksgiving, you ain't got nowhere else to go. The best place for you to go is to Christ because Christ is still the answer for the world today. We wanna be your church home. Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant and our entire pastoral team wanna be your pastors. The, the prompts are on the screen. Be thankful and get connected to the Christ of our salvation. This is your day. You'll never forget this day as long as you live. That on Thanksgiving, I made a change and I went back and told him, thank you for all you've done for me. We're waiting on you. We're not gonna go, as the old preacher would say, another father, until you stay where you are and get connected to the Christ of our salvation. Right now, not only are we offering you Christ, but it is hard to say you love somebody and you won't put your money where your mouth is. And what better day than Thanksgiving to sow a seed of thankfulness. You are already full. You getting ready to make sandwiches and you getting ready to eat sweet potato pie and you haven't told God thank you with your giving. I want you to sow a seed. Today is the 25th of November. And in this moment, we are exactly 30 days from Christmas. You getting ready to buy people, give to people that you don't even like. You're going to give them money and the person that healed you, the person that set you free, the person that gave you another day, who woke you up this morning, who started you on your way, you haven't taken time to put your money where your mouth is. I just need you to give a $25 seed. Stop watching the Cowboys. Stop talking to your family members. You don't even like most of them. I want you to pull your device out and sow the $25 seed. The prompts are on the screen. Give, and I don't want you to just do it now. I want you to do it right now. We are waiting on you because God is good and he's not just good sometimes. But I believe it's a few people in the studio audience that'll say he's good all the time. Now we're getting ready to get out your way because we thought enough of God to get dressed and leave our families to come eat of the word that God gave Clinton McFarland. But while you are doing what you are doing, we don't want you to go anywhere without a blessing being pronounced over your life. And I want you to realize that on tomorrow, as you get ready for Black Friday, I don't want you to spend your money and not spend it with people that look just like you. 
So we are getting ready for a major, major moment in Black Wall Street. We want you to come out tomorrow and make sure that you invest in your community, invest in your kind, invest in your people. Because when you give to people that are being blessed by the ministry of your space, God will give it back to you. Right now, don't forget Sunday morning, you're not on vacation. We'll be right back at the same spot at 9.30, 11.30, 1.30, and 8, giving God praise. If you'd stand to your feet in this virtual sanctuary, if you would stand to your feet in the physical studio, and I want you to lift your hands as high as you see yourself going. I don't want you to say this like it's a secret. I want you to shout unto God this blessing over your life and repeat after me, walk with God and he'll walk with me. Talk with God and he'll talk with me. Live for God, he'll live for me. Give to God, he'll give to me. Love God because he first loved me. And now unto him and him alone who is able to keep us from falling present us faultless before the throne. May God make you sleepless until you help somebody. May God make you restless until you help yourself. May God irritate you until you have enough sense to worship him. And may God bless you so abundantly that you have to start giving stuff away. Now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the blessed people of God, they shouted, Thank you. Shout it. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, God. Happy Thanksgiving. It's time for our video announcements. Join us in November as Dr. Bryant ministers his new sermon series, Warships, The Seven Missiles of Worship. This will be a learning experience like none other. You don't want to miss any of the Sundays in November. Are you ready for a trip of a lifetime? Join Dr. Bryant on an amazing 10-day Christmas journey to the Holy Land, November 27th through December 6th, 2022. Please register using the link on your screen. Make your deposit today to hold your seat. Hey family, it's Thomas Cody here and we are gearing up for Giving Tuesday, which will take place on November 30th. Giving Tuesday is a global day of philanthropy and charitable giving that's rooted with radical generosity. In literally every place around the world, individuals are going to be giving to organizations and causes that's been making a difference in our world today. You and I, we can both testify that Newberg has been on the front line serving hurting humanity. Whether it's been serving over 800,000 individuals via our King Food Table Ministry, whether it's sending millions of dollars to college students to send them back to school, whether it's sending supplies for uh, countries that's experienced disasters, Newburgh has been the extended hand of Jesus Christ touching hurting humanity. So on November 30th, we're charging you and five of your closest friends to give to Newburgh because Newburgh has literally been making a difference in our local community and around the world. You may go to any of our giving platforms and look for Giving Tuesday, and you don't have to wait until November 30th. You can sow right now. We understand that the Bible tells us to give, and it shall be given back to you in a greater measure. 
pressed down, shaken together. Running over shall men give unto your bosom. Well, on November 30th, I want you to join Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryan and the entire New Birth family as we partake in Giving Tuesday. Will you join us? Go now. Join us on Saturday, December 18th from 1 to 3 p.m. as we celebrate the most wonderful time of the year. We will be giving gifts to our children during Christmas City at our New Birth Holiday Pull-Up. Also, we are asking for donations of new unwrapped toys. Please drop off your gifts to the Family Life Center or our administrative entrance on the steeple side, December 4th and 5th, as well as the 11th and 12th between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Please register up to four children per household. To volunteer or make a financial contribution, please visit the link on your screen. Our King's Table will be closed on November 27th and December 19th through January 31st. For local resources, please contact the Atlanta Community Food Bank at 404-892-3333 or visit acfb.org. Join our virtual Book of the Month Club meeting on Tuesday, November 30th at 6 p.m. presented by our Call to Conquer bookstore and EICC. This month's book is Black Family, How to Build an Outstanding One. Please visit wearenewbirth.org for the Zoom link. Don't miss this powerful discussion. Calling all new members. We are honored that you have chosen New Birth as your church home and Dr. Bryant as your pastor. We invite you to join us for our virtual new members class on December 4th at 10 a.m. Please visit wearenewbirth.org to register. Welcome to our family. On behalf of New Birth and Dr. Bryant, we wish you a very, very happy Thanksgiving. We pray you spend quality time with loved ones and share the blessing of this season with others. We pray traveling grace and a safe return for all those who will be traveling. And that's going to do it for today's video announcement.